Soon, Xiao Wu and Baldhead arrived and walked alongside He Yen. As they descended the steps, Baldhead grumbled, Mr. Fu told me to chop off her husband's finger. Since Miss Yen couldn't mess with him, she came to me. Just to humor the woman and make her happy, Mr. Fu threw me under the bus. Xiao Wu scolded him through gritted teeth, you moron, you don't know anything. Brother Sheng is aware of this as well, and he'll keep it in mind if you do well. Look at you acting all gutsy. Don't say that Brother Sheng can't really let her chop your hand off, and even if she does, so what? Look at you dawdling so much. When they reached the lakeside, He Yen didn't say anything. She simply extended her hand to Baldhead and said lukewarmly, give me the keys. Baldhead retrieved a key from his pocket and carefully placed it in He Yan's hand. She extended her hand to him again and said simply, also. Reluctantly, Baldhead took out He Yan's mobile phone and handed it to her, explaining, Miss Yan, I took the phone by accident that day. I haven't looked into any of its contents. Pursing her lips slightly, He Yan raised her hand and threw the phone into the lake. With a cold face, she uttered the same word once more, also. Baldhead reluctantly took out a switchblade and handed it to He Yan, saying unwillingly, Miss He, under Mr. Fu's command, you may take my finger. I can only endure it. As he spoke, he squatted down beside a stone bench, spread his fingers apart, and pressed them onto the stone bench. He Yen lowered her eyes and said neither too fast nor too slow, that's right, I'm borrowing your Mr. Fu's authority. Remember, before Fu Xinqing stepped on me, anyone who wanted to touch my things had to think carefully first. I don't care whose order it was, and I won't argue with you about injustice or who owes me what. I'm only here to tell you to pick your battles carefully. Xiao Wu forced a smile and said, We'll keep your words in mind, Sister Yen. We won't dare again. As the saying goes, those who don't know are not guilty. You're magnanimous, could you please forgive Baldhead this time as it is his first offense? He Yen said, Yes, it was indeed his first time. I should let him go just this once. Baldhead was about to get up from the stone bench when He Yen suddenly swung her hand holding the knife down. The sharp blade pierced through the back of Baldhead's hand. Baldhead, who had calmed down, held the wrist of his injured hand tightly with the other hand. He watched He Yen calmly leave. As He Yen walked by the lake, she threw the knife into the water. He Yen returned to where she was standing and heard someone calling her name. When she turned back, it was Fu Xinqing. As she walked over to him, he said, Yen, Xiao Wu called and said that you stabbed a hole through Baldi's hand. He Yen curled her lips and replied, Yes, but I didn't chop off his finger. Since you allowed me the use of your authority, I obviously had to leave you a smidge of dignity. Fu Xinqing sighed and came close to her ear, saying, He Yen, would you take a look at yourself right now? There was once a respectable woman there, where did she go? Your ruthlessness is what makes you my plaything. Suddenly, a woman standing behind Fu Xinqing said, Mr. Fu, your itinerary for Country Y has been finalized. Mr. Yuan will meet you there. Taking the tab from her hands, she continued, speaking in French will help increase his impression of you. Fu Xinqing looked at He Yen and asked her, Do you have a visa for Country Y? He Yen replied, No, and asked him, Are you going to Y Country? When? He smiled and asked, What? You care about me now? She sneered quietly and said deliberately, of course I care. I care not just about your flight, I also care about when your plane will fall from the sky. If I didn't feel for the innocent passengers on the same plane as you. Fu Xinqing laughed, you need not worry about the other passengers. I'm flying on my private plane. Adjusting his tie, he continued, I'll be back the day after tomorrow. By then, we won't be waging these bloody battles against each other anymore, right? He Yen was overjoyed, and she didn't speak for a while. She only thought about meeting Mother Chen. Fu Xinqing seemed to be aware of her distraction. He smiled softly and said, He Yen, don't rack your little brain. Although you've changed your phone, I can still track its location. I can view the records of where you've been. If you dare to go to Liang Yuanza, I can send someone to chop off his remaining nine fingers. She responded to Fu Xinqing with a sneer, but her eyes scanned her surroundings. As soon as Fu Xinqing left, she immediately called a courier company within the city. She paid extra for the courier services, instructing, all you have to do is deliver this. Follow the 721 bus route. You don't need to go too fast. Just send the item before 9 p.m. He Yen couldn't afford to delay any longer. She waved down a taxi, got in, and immediately gave Mother Chen's address. She urged the driver, Mr., I'm in a hurry. Please drive as fast as you can. Arriving at the correct house number, He Yen quickly knocked on the door and said, Mother Chen, hello. It's me, He Yen as she saw her sitting in a wheelchair. Mother Chen replied, Come in, Teacher Yen. Mother Chen got straight to the point, These are the things I asked someone to find. I can't tell you everything, 
but the more important information is in here. He Yen opened the file bag and began to examine the contents. She paid special attention to the date of the operation, which happened to be a month before Fu Xinxing went abroad. A month later, Fu Xinxing returned from Europe after two years. Faint threads were connecting in He Yan's mind, and she could almost guess how Shen Jijia had escaped from prison. In fact, none of this deduction was difficult, but the evidence to prove it had been hard to come by. Moreover, why did the Fu clan save Shen Jijia's life like this? Shen Jijia was switched out, so who was the person who swapped places with him? Where did the real Fu Xinxing go? She didn't take the information with her but handed it back to Mother Chen, saying, let's keep these here, it will be safer. I'll go get Fu Xinxing's fingerprints first. Anything that he has touched is fine, Mother Chen replied. He Yen left Mother Chen's place to retrieve her painkillers, but when she returned home, she found Liang Yuanzhe there with a courier box in his hands. As they stepped inside the house, Liang Yuanzhe casually mentioned that he had returned to collect some forgotten items. He Yen, attempting to maintain a facade of normalcy, engaged in casual conversation. So, what are your plans for the future? she asked, trying to sound composed. With his hands tucked into his pockets, Liang Yuanzhe replied, I'm thinking of resigning. Perhaps I'll spend some time in the United States and travel around the world for a bit. I haven't really decided how far I'll go yet. He Yen couldn't help but smile genuinely. That sounds like a good plan. Suddenly, Liang Yuanzhe's expression turned serious as he asked, How can I contact you in the future? She forced a smile and responded vaguely, Why don't you try not contacting me first? If there ever comes a time when I can't find you, please reach out to me. Understanding the implication, Liang Yuanzhe nodded in agreement. All right. He proceeded to retrieve the belongings he had come for from the bedroom. Among them were two small palm sized dolls, a reminder of the early days of their relationship. Back then, she had taken the boy doll and he had taken the girl doll. This time, Liang Yuanzhe held on to the girl doll, his voice hoarse as he spoke. Take care of yourself, He Yen. Really, take good care of yourself. He Yen nodded, unable to meet his eyes. She whispered softly, you too. As she sat by the sofa, her phone rang, and she rushed to answer it. The caller was Fu Xinxing, who sounded unusually cheerful. He inquired, did you follow my advice? He Yan's pent-up emotions suddenly burst forth, her voice rising sharply. Fu Xinxing, are you out of your mind? What's your game here? Do you actually believe you're in love with me? What do you want from me? Isn't humiliating me enough for you? What more do you need? The receiver fell silent, but Fu Xinxing didn't hang up. After a few moments, He Yan took a deep breath, her voice trembling as she continued, He's gone. He really left this time, and he won't be coming back. Fu Xinxing remained silent, his heart heavy. He Yan's words weighed on him, her pain and heartache piercing through the call. In the background, his secretary, Yen Zhu, glanced at him with an odd expression and softly reminded him, Mr. Fu, we're running short on time. Just as he ended the call, He Yan's tears ceased. Lying on her bed, she contemplated the recent events. She couldn't help but wonder if Fu Xinxing had developed some genuine feelings for her. It seemed inconceivable, even self-indulgent but his tolerance for her emotional outburst hinted at something more. Thoughts of their next meeting consumed her. How Fu Xinxing treated her would shape her future actions and attitude toward him. On the fourth day, in the morning, Fu Xinxing sent a message to He Yan, summoning her urgently. Since He Yan had replaced her mobile phone, he hadn't installed tracking software but relied on her phone number to keep tabs on her. Fu Xinxing's demeanor turned somber as he instructed Ah Jiang, check the surveillance at He Yan's residence and find out how long Liang Yuanzhe stayed and when he left. Ah Jiang, looking a bit embarrassed, responded, Mr. Fu, the hidden cameras at Miss He's house stopped working a while ago. Fu Xinxing's expression grew colder, a sense of helplessness washing over him. For some inexplicable reason, images of He Yan and Liang Yuanzhe tangled together on her bed haunted his thoughts, refusing to be pushed away. The more he tried to suppress these images, the clearer and more overwhelming they became. Then, unexpectedly, Ah Jiang informed him, Mr. Fu, Miss He is here. He Yen entered the house without encountering any obstacles. In the spacious living room, she glanced up at the second floor and spotted Fu Xinxing's imposing figure. He stood at the top of the staircase, his gaze condescending as he observed her, his expression devoid of any emotion. She didn't move, simply holding her ground and returning his piercing stare. After a brief moment, he sneered and said casually, come here. Glancing at her with disdain as she stood in the middle of the room, Fu Xinxing ordered coldly, go take a shower. She hesitated for a moment before responding, I already showered at home. 
Examining her face intently, he smiled coldly. Is that so? Then why do you still feel dirty? Go on, have a proper shower and wash away that man sent from your body. He rubbed off her red lipstick with his thumb, stating deliberately, and this heavy makeup of yours, do you wear it when you're with Liang Yuanza as well? Can he stand it? Doesn't it repulse him? He Yen remained silent, enduring his verbal assault without protest. Observing her apathy, he grew increasingly frustrated, unable to contain his feigned composure any longer. With a scoff, he suddenly grabbed her wrist, pulling her forcefully into the bathroom. He turned on the water and carelessly sprayed it on her head and face using the shower head. Gripping her neck firmly, he sneered, how does it feel? Now you understand my intentions. Does this seem like a loving relationship to you? He Yen didn't respond, she couldn't, even if she wanted to. The hot water, combined with his harsh actions, washed away the layers of makeup from her face, leaving her looking pale and vulnerable. Fu Xinxing froze for a moment, then another few seconds passed, and a realization dawned upon him. He became aware of the cruel extent to which he had treated her. Hastily, he opened his arms to embrace her, calling out her name with concern, He Yen. Gently, he cradled her in his arms, providing warmth and comfort. Gradually, her cold body began to regain its normal temperature. Fu Xinxing tenderly released her and held her close once more. He whispered into her ear, Be good, don't make things harder for yourself. In a trembling voice, she maintained a defiant stance. Fu Xinxing, you're despicable. With a soft acknowledgement, he admitted, Yes, I've always been. He Yen hesitated for a moment before muttering, Yes, Shen Jijia has always been despicable. He embraced her from behind, his strong arms enveloping her. After a while, he inquired softly, The night before yesterday, Liang Yuanzi didn't touch you, did he? She froze momentarily before responding with disdain, Fu Xinxing, not everyone is as despicable as you. He chuckled, agreeing softly, let's hope not. After helping He Yen dry her hair with a large bath towel, Fu Xinxing stepped outside to give her some privacy as she changed. When she emerged from the bathroom, wrapped in a white bathrobe, he gently placed a hand on her shoulder. I'll arrange for a doctor to check on you, he said. Seated on the bed, Fu Xinxing suddenly snatched her purse from her hand. He Yan's heart raced with fear that he might discover the roll of transparent tape she intended to use for collecting his fingerprints. Fortunately, he didn't pay it any attention. Instead, he examined her and calmly advised, the doctor mentioned your pain might be due to the contraceptive pills, so it's best to stop taking them. He Yen looked annoyed as she retorted, if I don't take them, do you expect me to get sterilized or bear a child out of wedlock for you? At the word child, Fu Xinqing's expression darkened. He responded coldly, He Yen, you can't seem to recognize good intentions, can you? As he pulled back the covers on the bed, he ordered her sternly, come here. Moving closer, He Yen couldn't help but inquire, Fu Xinqing, are you plotting some new way to torment me again? She believed he had fallen asleep when, to her surprise, he spoke slowly, He Yen, don't worry. Given my strong dislike for you, I'm carefully planning how to slowly torment you, piece by piece, to ease my hatred. All right, I'll be waiting, she replied softly. After a moment of silence, she added, but you should be cautious too, don't let me catch you off guard and stab you to death. He teased her gently, the knives are in the kitchen. Just make sure to choose the boning knife, it's easier to use. Do you remember which one it is? If not, I'll show you tomorrow. The next morning, He Yan and Fu Xinqing were at the breakfast table when halfway through the meal, He Yan's cell phone rang. It was her mother calling. When she didn't pick up the phone, Fu Xinqing asked her, Why aren't you picking up? Did you have an argument with your family? She glanced at him and replied lukewarmly, Thanks to you, our father-daughter relationship is about to be severed. He Yan's cell phone rang again. She quite naturally shushed him, then picked up the phone and answered aloud, Mom, I'm eating. If you have something to say, please hurry. I have to rush to school to invigilate exams. Pointing towards the soy milk in front of her seat, she deliberately said to her mother in front of him, I know dad is in a bad mood, but what can I do? Mom, how about this, you two go abroad to unwind and save yourselves the trouble of celebrating the Chinese New Year. Instead of reaching for the soy milk in front of her seat, he handed her the soy milk in front of him. He Yen was focused on the phone call, so she took the pouch. Afterward, she slowly walked up to the second floor while holding the soy milk, clearly to avoid him and to talk to her mother. But as soon as the door was closed behind her, she picked up her bag from the bed. Using a brush dipped in powder, she lightly brushed it outside the pouch, making it clearly reveal the fingerprints on it. She held her breath, put the tape on, and took down all the fingerprint lines on the pouch. It was not until she put fingerprints in her bag that she slowly exhaled in relief. He Yen came back to her senses and replied, Mom, 
stop guessing. I'm not with anyone, I just live in the school dormitory. As she spoke, she came out of the room with her bag, coat, and other items. Fu Xinxing was standing on the stairs, deliberately calling out to her, Yen, do you want me to take you to work? She was stunned at the sound of his voice, but the next moment she heard her mother ask sharply on the phone, Yen Yen, who is talking? Who is this man? Who do you live with? He Yen glared at him condescendingly and asked furiously, is this some kind of fun prank to you? Fu Xinxing, how childish are you? He looked up with a smile and replied, it's fun. His good mood rendered her speechless, so she simply ignored him and just walked down with a calm face. Suddenly, Fu Xinxing grabbed her arm when she passed by him. He Yen froze for a moment, and before she could react, he had already pushed her against the wall. He trapped her with his arms, lowered his eyes to look at her, and with a malicious smile on his lips, he asked in a low voice, it's early, how about we do something fun today? She pleaded, stop messing around. I have to supervise the first exam today, so I really can't be late. He deliberately said in a hoarse voice, I can follow your request. However, you will have to compensate me in another way. She hesitated for a while, then raised her hand and grabbed his collar. Closing her eyes, she puckered her lips despite her resentment. He was deliberately playing with her, so when he saw her approaching, he stood up straight on purpose, making her kiss land on his chin. His face was completely devoid of his usual indifference and fierceness. The corners of his eyes and brows were full of smiles, the corners of his lips were slightly taut and flat, and he said lightly, a little sincerity, please. She threw the bag and coat that she had been carrying in her hands down the steps, wrapped her hands around his neck, tiptoed, and kissed him. After a long while, she drew back breathlessly and asked, is this sincerity enough now? Fu Xinxing stared at her silently without saying a word, but his eyes said everything, he wanted to devour her. He Yen grinned at him as she slowly bent her knees, lowered her body, and got out from under his arms. She ran down quickly, saying, goodbye, Mr. Fu. When Yen arrived at the school, on the way to the office, she received looks from countless people. Someone from the crowd called out to Yen and told her to take a look at what's trending on Weibo's searches. When Yen looked at her phone, she got shocked. The big character posters on the bulletin board had been cleaned up, but their contents had long been spread around. Whether it was about an unethical relationship between a teacher and a student or mistress of a tycoon, all of these were things that could definitely provoke people's nerves. Not to mention that the woman in question was still married. As soon as Yen put her phone down, she saw Su Chinwa walking in the lobby with his head down, and people recording him. After just a few steps, he was called by He Yen. He turned to look at her and saw her expression was very serious. She said in a deep voice, walk with your head up. If you have a clear conscience, you have nothing to be ashamed of before God nor man. Su Chinwa was startled, and his eyes lit up unconsciously. He immediately straightened his spine and replied loudly, I understand, teacher. She gave him a file and told him to put this in the office. Su Chinwa agreed with her and walked away from there. As soon as he left, people around Yen started questioning her about the affair she is having and if everything on the internet is true. The crowd cornered Yen by forcing her to answer the questions. But suddenly, someone grabbed Yan's hand and pulled her from the crowd. It was Ah Jiang. He gave Yan a cap to hide her appearance and assured her that she didn't need to worry much because Fu Xinxing has already sent people to investigate this matter. When she entered Fu Xinxing's premium box at Night Blitz, she realized Fu Xinxing was sitting in the middle, Xiao Wu and Baldhead were all standing aside, and Yu Jia was kneeling in front of the large coffee table. She had already guessed what was going on, but she still asked him, what's going on? Fu Xinxing smiled, raised his chin towards Yu Jia below, and said, well, I caught the evil little witch who slandered you. 